give you all the glory Lord we give you all the praise hallelujah hallelujah how many know that God is good just a, just a few of us everything inside of us should be shouting hallelujah he's good hallelujah I do thank the Lord for being here this evening. Definitely know I'm not a stranger. And um, I don't take it lightly each time that we do visit this place because I know that this is a land that God has equipped and called us to. I've been coming here now since 2004. And I, one day last week, I happened to pull out, out of one of the archives the first time that we came here. No, actually, it would have been the second time. The first time I came, it was with Krampus Crusade on 2004 and the following year was 2005 where the God, Lord was dealing with me and leading a team here and we brought a team here and I began to reflect back on that meeting and I want you to know that since 2005 2004 God is doing a new thing I said God is doing a new thing see what he's doing in this hour and as I get into the message of course we know that Everyone in here, we've already blessed you. Thank you all for being here tonight. But I believe it's about hearing the word of the God, heeding the word of God, and, ex, ex, and really moving the word of God to where we can only hear what he's saying in this hour. Amen? Amen? We all know tonight that God came to meet us here because he's been here all day long waiting for you to come to worship, to praise him, and to give him glory. And to hear a word tonight, hopefully that will bless your soul and lead you closer to that place called kingdom. Amen? And not just kingdom, but kingdom manifestation. And for the next three nights, we're going to be dealing with kingdom manifestation. And as we begin to explore these three, I'm going to give you for the three parts. So we'll be prepared. I have learned how to just set the groundwork so we can get moving, start at the, at the um, launch pad, and then move on up to the point to where we accelerate. Amen? But as the Lord was coming through the songs and hymns tonight, and he, he says that the topic of this um, call, um, revival is, what is it? How many knows what the topic is? Kingdom manifestation through what? Pra ushering in what? Praise and worship. Well, that's what was going on tonight when they began to worship and praise the Lord. That was the oil that God was producing that was aligning us with kingdom manifestation. So every time you come into the house and you hear the worshipers and the praisers begin to usher in the presence of the Lord, you want to be very intentional and expectant to receive something from the Lord that will create and cause a new movement and manifestation in and through you that will bless the body. Someone say bless the body. Amen. 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 So as we quickly will be reviewing for the next three nights, I'm going to give you the theme of the three. And the first one will be, get my note rather here, my, my mood is. Give me one second. I got all my notes. The first part will be manifestation of his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Again, part one tonight is manifestation of his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And a sidebar of that particular topic is the king is within you. I want someone tonight to agree with heaven and say, the king is in me. Is in Hallelujah. That will be the part one that we will deal with as the Lord says, sees fit tonight. Followed by tomorrow, we'll be dealing with kingdom agents called out, which is the ecclesia, to rule and to reign on earth as it is in heaven. We, the kingdom agents, ones that have been called out of darkness, translated and transformed into his marvelous light and brought in to his kingdom. We're going to now begin to see on tomorrow 
How are we being the called out, the ecclesia? How we were sent to rule and to reign on earth as it is in heaven, which will produce the calling forth of the be done. It's time in earth. I heard the um, pastor or servant speak and say that the word is being spread all over the nations. That is the work and the plan of God that is earmarked even before the foundations of this earth. That the kingdom of God would reach and expand all across the whole wide world. That no one would miss or have an opportunity to receive him. So tomorrow we'll be talking about calling forth the be done manifestation. And the vehicle to get us there will be praise and worship. That is the vehicle truly that, that aligns us with heaven to release kingdom manifestation. Praise and worship is the vehicle. In a sense, we're the vehicle, but praise and worship becomes the oil. It begins to become the oil that fuels us to keep us moving, even when we don't feel like praising the Lord. Amen? There's a greater in us that says, I yet want to praise the Lord that's still moving to keep us praising him. On the third night, we'll be concluding with living in the be dones on earth as it is in heaven. Again, living in the be dones on earth as it is in heaven, which will produce the praise and worship that will smell, someone say smell, like a sweet smelling aroma that will fill the nostrils of God. That's what he wants us to do. That's what he wants us to become, is the producing agent of that sweet smelling aroma that as it lifts up unto the nostrils of God, it begins to cause anywhere that you are to illuminate and you begin to smell his presence. How many know somebody needs to smell the presence of God tonight? There's many of us in here that we're looking for God in, uh, in all the wrong places. But tonight we're going to begin to look at where he wants us to find him that we'll be able to see him. Amen. Let us quickly go in scripture to Genesis. Genesis 1, 26 through 27 and 28. I will read tonight. And for those of you that are new here or don't know me and I'm subject to run over here, go over there, go back there. Wherever the Holy Spirit leads me to go, that's what I do, okay? I may take the shoes. I'm just prefacing it to pre-warn you. I move in the power of the Holy Spirit. And whatever he says for me to do, to be comfortable or whatever it is, I do. So just don't, don't pay me no attention. Just hear and heed the word of God. Amen. Okay, we'll be coming first, um, that'll be Genesis 1, 26, 27, and 28. And it says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So in this context here, we see, we look here, the 28th verse says for us to have, for them to have been fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. That was their charge. They were led in the garden as agents to man and to honor and to keep the garden. But while they were doing those things, God had laid out specific instructions on what they were to do. And here, as we see it, it says, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. Now, 
Before we know this event occurred, we know that the story that transpired in heaven when Satan was cast out because of disobedience. He sought his own worship. He sought his own God, his small G God that he wanted to become. But God sent and kicked him out of heaven and he brought him on to this earth. And the word of God says, and the earth was void. It was dark. It had no form. It didn't have anything. But yet God said, because he already knew, even from the beginning, according to Isaiah 6, 46 and 10, that he had, the word says that he already had ordered the end from the beginning. That means that even before Lucifer fell, even before Adam and Eve partook of the fruit, he already had a way and a plan of escape. But what he was trying to do, even after Lucifer fell, in creating Adam and Eve was to have a citizen of the kingdom. To be able to have rulership, to have dominion, to be able to subdue, to be able to multiply, and to be able to replenish the earth and get the job done. But the word goes on to say that even though Adam failed at his charge, the word still yet again already had a way of escape to bring him back in to alignment with his divine purpose, just as he does for each of us tonight. He has a way that he's already made and has provided and ultimately, as I was saying when I first made my first statements, when I said that the king is within you, if you've been baptized through the power of the Holy Spirit and you've been and spe with the evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God is giving you utterance, you have the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit to subdue, to multiply, replenish, and to take dominion over the earth. Because God has made us and he's equipped us because he's fashioned us in his likeness according to his spirit that lives within us. So here we see here that after the fall, everything happened, chaos broke out. But God said something that is major and I want you to hear. Two points there. First, we know God created Adam out of the dust of the ground. That means the dust, the dirt, nothing that was significant other than to walk on. That is what God created him out of. The word says that and when he breathed into the nostrils of Adam, Adam became a living soul. So one thing I want us to remember, here's point one. The only thing that is saved in you is him. I said the only thing that is saved within us is the Holy Spirit. Many of us have given away our benefits, our legal authority, and have allowed the enemy to keep us stuck in religion of doing duties and doing deeds, but yet not getting the be done's done on earth as it is in heaven because we have not identified ourselves as being kingdom citizens. But I just want to let you know today this, this, this flesh that is no good still, right, there's nothing good in it. So we can just tell, oh, we already know it's nothing good. So once we, we expose the flesh, we can just be so, we can live in praise and worship all day long. Knowing that the only thing that can give me the ability to live holy, the only one that is the, gives me the ability to sing hallelujah, the only one that gives me the opportunity and the ability to love my enemy is the king that is within me. That's the only one. That's what begins to usher in a new level of praise and worship when you're able to identify with the king that's in you. That will bring you joy. Even when somebody just does talked about you, looked at you crazy, said you weren't worth nothing, cast you aside, you'll realize the king in you is greater than you, and you're still able to love even in spite of that smack across the face. Don't you know that produces the aroma of God? Don't you know that it smells sweet in his nostrils? God tonight is wanting us to know and identify with what he not only gave Adam, but he lost, 
But now what did he give us when we've been engrafted into the bloodline of Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit? He's given us an effective witness to rejoice, to have the glad glads when things aren't going so great. That's a blessing tonight. Amen? So as we look here, I want us to stay focused on this. God needed to find an agent to enlist into his kingdom. And today he's really still, and he has been since Jesus left and returned back to glory, he's still looking for those agents that would become citizens. Amen. All right. Now, let's quickly go to, I'm going to go here to St. Matthew 6. Let's go where? St. Matthew 6. Now, I'm going to real quickly read it in two translations because I thought it was significant. One I'll be reading from the King James, and the other one I'll pick it up out of the message. So the sixth um, King James Version, excuse me, it says, I'm going to read just uh, 9 and 10. It says, after this manner, therefore ye pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Amen? Now here we see that when we look at this in the King James, it says that after this manner, therefore ye pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. He's now giving us a roadmap of something to begin to walk this thing out, to know that when you pray, pray according to what heaven is speaking. That means the only voice we need to be listening to is what heaven is speaking. That's the still, small voice that when something is knocking in your life and you don't know how to deal with it, but there's something that's small in you that's just tapping on you. It is just alerting you to just listen that you can hear the word of God, the voice of God. Here the message version says, the world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are prayer arrogant. They're full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques for getting what you want them from God. Don't, don't fall for this nonsense. This is your father you are dealing with, and he knows better than you what you need. With a God like this loving you, you can pray very simply like this. Our Father in heaven, reveal who you are to me. Set the world right. Do what's best as above, so below. Keep us alive with three square, square meals. Give us forgiveness forgiveness for you and forgiving of others. Keep us safe from our own selves and the devil. You're in charge. You can do all anything you want. You're ablaze in beauty. Yes, yes, yes. When we look at this, this translation, People have a lot of translations, but sometimes even if you parallel it to Greek or Hebrew, it brings simplicity that we can understand what is God trying to speak to us through his spirit. Because a lot of things will not make sense in our logic. A lot of things won't make sense when we read the scripture. But when you begin to allow the Holy Spirit to become your best teacher, it will begin to reveal the hidden treasures of his word. And then it becomes a roadmap that we will follow. Amen? So tonight as we begin to look at this, I want you to think about one more translation. Is that all right with y'all? The Passion Translation. The Passion Translation says, according to Matthew 6, 9, 13, Our Father, dwelling in the heavenly realms, May the glory of your name be the center on which our lives, our lives turn. Manifest your kingdom rim and cause your every purpose to be fulfilled on earth just as it is fulfilled in heaven. We acknowledge you as our provider of all we need each day. Forgive us the wrongs we have done as we ourselves release forgiveness to those who have wronged us. Rescue us every time we face tribulation and set us free from evil. 
For you are the king who rules with power and glory forever. Amen. Hallelujah. When we start looking at this from a place to where we can really see ourselves, how many has ever read the scripture? Sometimes you couldn't understand it. Amen. Nobody? Just me. I don't been, okay. We, don't, we missed it, right? But the Holy Spirit reveals it to us. So the one that is the best teacher is the Holy Spirit. Amen. So when we look here, we want to stay focused on, as it talks about when the disciples asked them, they were realizing that there was something missing in them that they didn't have. Today we have things in us that are still missing. And the only one that can reveal it to us is the Holy Spirit. But that's why praise and worship is so significant. The enemy don't want us to praise and worship the Lord. He'd rather us just sit here, clap our hands, cross our legs, and look good. But he wants us to get into the rhythm of praising him in spite of what we feel or what we're going through. Because it says that when we send Judah first, something begins to happen. See, Judah goes in like the, like the um, ghostbuster. He goes in and he goes in and he takes the land. How many know that when you start praising the Lord, it begins to cause the enemy to start ambushing himself? You don't even have to fight because you know why? Because the victory has already been won. And therefore, the only position we fight from today is from victory and not for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's when we can sing the joy of the Lord is our strength, even when we're going through hard times, because we realize that the king in us is greater than what we're going through. Hallelujah. That's what produces a song that the angels can't sing. Hallelujah. It's the king that's in you. Hallelujah. Glory. Tonight we're going to deal with and pull back the layers of what it looks like to take away the ideologies and the beliefs that we've established in our own mind. How many, we've all, we've all have put on things that maybe came from our families or did whatever, I'm not going to go all there, but things that we do because my mama did it, my sister did it, we all do it and have done it and still do it. That doesn't make it wrong. But what we want to do is keep it in the proper context to where if we don't do it, it doesn't cause us to become grieved to where we cannot worship the Lord. The Lord wants us to worship him in the beauty of holiness. So even though I say, eat the orange and spit the seed out, what you can use when it comes to living in this earth suit still, we're going to still come in contact with things that we will engage in that they may not know God, but the only one that they may ever read about them is what you live. So your lifestyle in the presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E, -E -E, not what we speak, but the presence of God that lives within us, it enters the room before you open your mouth. So that's how we become a praise and worship agent for the kingdom of God because we're exuding what he is within us. And it just pours out. It just oozes out. When you're in a situation and you think you're going to get mad, but you begin to just stomp your feet and begin to make a cadence in the spirit, it begins to cause the spirit of God to just ooze out of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what he wants us to know, what we have inside of us. We're pressing out new praise that's producing new oil. We can't wait to get to church to get this oil. We come here to gather together to build each other up, to go back out into the places we have to go to take the king to the, to the, to the world. And the witness has to be effectively shining upon us. When, he, when someone sees you and they're like, mm, there's something different about you. You look quite peculiar. The only thing you can say is the presence of God. It's the grace of God. See, because if it hadn't been for that grace, where would we be today? But 
the grace of God when we just went through a bad situation, but yet the glory was still resting. They were still able to see the king shining through you. Oh, what a joy. Oh, what a privilege to be a citizen of a king kingdom where he don't judge me because the flesh is still being made. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that we got a king that no matter what we do, he's still standing up in us. How much of joy is that? He's still standing. He's still standing in you. When I found that out that I don't have to try to be so perfect because the only thing perfect in me is him, I began to know and understand why my worship can be pure. I understand why my praise can begin to create a sound even when there's no instruments playing because we become the instruments. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of us in here has a sound. And when you start lifting up a sound, heaven can understand it. And it begins to bring in a fresh wind of his glory that begins to reach each of our houses and blesses us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I thank God that I'm a citizen of his kingdom and I understand what my legal rights are. It doesn't matter if church says amen. I can still say thank you, Jesus, and praise him as I'm going out. We don't stop praising him because they say amen. We are the church. Hey, a lively stone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're a lively stone. Glory. And he's trying to produce a new fragrance. But it comes through the praises and the worship that you receive by what you pressed out. That means something we press out. And when we press it out of us, he pours it into us and then we pour it out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So tonight, as we begin to look at it, we want to begin to reflect on knowing and dealing with who the king is within us, his kingdom, and how it's manifested, but how does it align with his government? Some things are lawful and other things are expedient. But one thing is for sure, he has one established kingdom. And that's his kingdom. The earth has kingdoms, little K, but yet there's been one that has been established that is within us, the kingdom citizens, that we have to take dominion over and live in. Amen? So God has come to us tonight as he's building us in a formation of praise and worship. He's readjusting and he's realigning us because this is an hour of manifestation from a whole nother time in history. And for those of you, and I'm not going all into that, but I want you to know that this is all about God's kingdom. Because when you know it's all about God's kingdom, you're going to know it's all about the king. And when the king begins to speak, you're going to begin to execute. See, when the king says move, you're going to begin to move. When the king says lift your hands, you're going to lift your hands. When the king says speak, you're going to speak. Because he's in you. Hallelujah. So this tonight is not about religion. It's about relationship. The only way we can survive the kingdom that God has placed us in is through a relationship. And that's by relating with the king. One thing about the king, he doesn't expect us to always come feeling or wanting him to just be savior. He don't want us to just be him to be saved. He doesn't want us to always come to him as Savior. He wants us to come to him as Lord. I honor and adore you, Lord, just because you're Lord. You're the keeper of my soul. I bow my holiness to you, O King. So when I come to you as Lord, it brings us into a different posture of praise. When you pray from the position of him being Lord, you're in hollow. 
You realize that there's nothing in you. And once you've accepted and connected with what the blood did on the cross, it produces a praise of exuberance that just comes out of you. Mm. I don't know if we're understanding. Everything that you need is in you. Everything he preordained before the foundation when he created you for this generation and this time, this dispensation was purpose because he knew what he needed to bring out of you for such a time as this. Amen. So to look at the word manifestation, we said kingdom manifestation through praise and worship. We're saying that Manifestation is the act of disclosing what is secret. Something that hasn't been made known. We may feel it, sense it inside of us, but maybe our faith hasn't been grown enough to activate it. So it just lays dormant. But you have the itch of knowing there's something in me, and every time something starts pushing it, it starts producing more oil, and it's getting closer and closer to being birthed through me, but yet I'm still waiting for God. But God is saying tonight, he's waiting on you. He's waiting on us to become the manifestation. Jesus already finished his job. He's gone, and he's back, sitting on the right hand of the Father. But now he's called his agents, kingdom citizens, and he's dressed them and clothed them within his righteousness. So here manifestation is to make apparent. You can read these scriptures at your leisure, Mark 4, 22. John, I have a pretty many, so you may not want to put them up. John, for the sake of time, John 17 and 6. These are things to begin to help you to become christ on the earth, his presence, ruling and reigning, to make apparent, to make relevant. The Christ in you to be made relevant in the earth. That he can see you when nobody else can. When we've worn feelings and emotions on our sleeve because life has wounded us, so therefore we're still fighting through the soulish rim and we don't clearly get it. Because we have not chosen to understand that once you've been engrafted into the bloodline of Jesus, you're already an heir to the throne. That grants you access to go in. Hallelujah. To make apparent. To produce an evidence of his presence. Manifestation also, Romans 8, 19, to uncover the manifestations of the sons of God. To uncover. Three positions sometimes I think about, which is uncover, discover, and recover. In life, as we are transforming closer and into more of the likeness of God, we will uncover, discover, and recover the things in our life that are still keeping our praise and our worship from, from flowing like a river. Our river should always be running, should always be flowing. But ask God, your creator, to reveal to you what is still covered up that you need to uncover, discover, and recover. That the enemy has you tricked in believing that you done got it. It's time for us to know and be rightly accounted for for who we are. And one thing in this hour, we got to take it by force. We don't ask, we don't beg, we don't plead, but we, once we get into the place and the position of power through praise and worship and pressing out of fresh oil, it will cause you to keep speaking even when everybody has left the room. You will still speak to the chair. When everything has stopped giving you the accolades and the praise,
things, you're going to still begin to say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. So you're going to begin to become the instrument that begins to blow a new sound that only heaven can interpret. That's the time we're living in, to where wherever you are, if he sends you down to a place that is not so lovely, you start beginning to blow the instrument that's within you and watch kingdom come as it is in heaven, be manifested on earth, and you begin to see and experience the be done. We don't wrestle or strive. We don't have time to wrestle. We don't have time to struggle. We don't have time to think about. We got to begin to activate kingdom manifestation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time to redeem the time and begin to gang together. We got to touch together in agreement. We got to grab each other and begin to take. We're a mighty army. And what he needs us to do is connect like the body in order to understand that his body has many members. That means not only are they many members, but they have different functions. And once we begin to get together and begin to relate to each other, we'll be in to know how to create a new song. A new song that will cause heaven to come down on earth. And produce the be done. We ain't waiting till tomorrow. I'm not waiting until next week. I want my blessing right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And anything that has illegally entered into your area of territory that he's giving you dominion over, you got to use your own weapon of your mouth and begin to declare, get thee out of here. You don't belong here. Get thee behind me, Satan. This is not your jurisdiction. For the Lord God says that in him I live and move and have my very being. Hallelujah. That means that nothing formed against me, no weapon that attempts to form against you will prosper. In every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, God shall condemn. That means that the best oil of worship you can produce is when you hold your peace. And let the Lord fight your battle. Because when he fights your battle, you can say it's finished. It's finished. And then you begin to begin to begin to begin to begin to understand that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. I may not be able, speaking to all of us, we may not be able to speak, quote, every scripture in the Bible. We may not even have good memory. Whatever it is that we're lacking, when we realize that we're kingdom heirs to this throne, we can begin to say, Holy Spirit, speak through me. Holy Spirit, articulate that. <laughs> Holy Spirit reveals it to me. Holy Spirit, you are my captain. You are my way maker. You are my first. You are the one that is able to do in me exceedingly and abundantly through the power that worketh in us. Until we realize what we have, we will live beneath our means. Tonight, God is saying manifestation is something that is produced by the sovereign king. The only way you can get this manifestation is by the sovereign king. The one that you are a citizen to. The one you've enlisted into. You can't get it through education. You can't get it because you look good. The only way you can get it is by having a relationship with the king that is within you. And you can't get it just because you come to church. Hallelujah. The be done that need to be done is not here, it's out there. I'm going to say it again. The be done that need to be done, it's already been done here. They got to be done out there. Every place you walk, somebody should see Jesus on your life. Huh, chaos? 
every place your feet treads, you should be calling somebody blessed. Every place that we go, we should have a song that the angels can't sing. God is calling us to arise in a formation of his kingdom. Coming out of what was familiar and coming into what is divine. We wonder why the word says that the kingdom of God suffers violence. But the violence take it by force. That means that you don't go to the enemy and say, can, 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 I, can I have my stuff? You have to go in armed with his authority. And one thing about the enemy, he knows Jesus. So you walk up to the enemy, you ain't even got to do nothing. God's presence will cause the enemy to become your footstool. And he'll be giving your stuff back and don't know why. And once he gives it back, you ask him, is he ready to receive Jesus? It ain't about the stuff. It's about God's assignments that he's placing on our lives to be the vehicle to bring kingdom on earth that those that don't know him will find him. It's not just for us. It's for all his creation. And we are the vehicles. Driving into places we don't want to go, into disappointments, into hardship. We don't want to go there, but he says you got to go where I send you and bring the kingdom of God on earth. Hallelujah. We got to bring it. And when you bring it, you bring them. You bring them. And that does not mean we have to be this or that. We have to be a citizen. That's all we got to be. I ain't got to be a preacher. I ain't got to be a teacher. I ain't got to be nothing. But a citizen, a servant. A servant that is not looking but seeing. I'm not just trying to look at what's wrong with you. I want to see God in you being high and lifted. Hallelujah. I don't want to look at what makes me mad about you. I want to see God lift it. Hallelujah. That his kingdom can come on earth and be done. Because we need an army. We need an army. Many are falling away from the church because they're tired of familiarity. But I'm telling you it's a time for the kingdom to arise and take it back by force. And get the be done's done. Whatever part you play is just as important. If you up here speaking, talking, walking, it don't matter what you have to do. If you're the donkey that has to go out and just take a ride, take the ride. Hallelujah. God is trying to get us to align with his kingship. <sighs> so in this kingdom government, he has, he, this is not one in which you're voted or that you are voted in or voted out. This is a birthright. This is a birthright. So that means if it's a birthright, you own it. You're part of it. There's nothing we have to do but accept it. Embrace it. Choose to live in it. Choose to expect it. Choose to call it, be forth as though it were. Begin to look and to see it. Once we start looking, we'll miss it. But when we start seeing, we'll see it. The very places we look is the very place we need to see. Many of us say, oh, I got problems at home. I got this, I got that. But don't you know it's in the fire? Don't you know it's in those wells that's been covered up? That's where your stuff is? Don't you know it's where those places that people have counted you out, have discounted you, but those are the places where your stuff is, where your praise is, where your worship is? It's in those places that the enemy has disguised them as being the enemy. But it's actually the opportunity to go in 
and to get your stuff, which will bring you into a place of praise and worship to where you may not even be singing, but you are exhibiting that place. It just eludes out of you. Every time you see his creation, it produce, produces a new experience. How many wants to experience a new place in God? How many tonight? How many is tired of being in the church but not really using the benefits that we've been given? God is saying tonight, I got more. God didn't get through none of it, but it's okay, right? But here's the piece I want to leave you with real quick tonight. That the king that is within you has given you the power. The king that is within you. All through scriptures from Old Testament up until now, before Jesus came, I'm, I'm finishing up. The king was preparing his bride. We know all through scripture and Old Testament, all the things that they did. I'm not going into all that. I don't have time tonight. The only thing that the king wanted was him to love him, obey him, desire him, serve him, worship him, praise him. That's the only thing the king wanted and still does today. He just wants us to love him. He just wants us to appreciate him, to acknowledge him. to identify with his characteristics and his attributes, his sovereignty. He just wants us to become in communion. That when life is happening on this side, that we can commune with the Father. And he can commune back. That's what the king wants. Everything broke out after Lucifer was kicked out and then after Adam and Eve disobeyed. So anything from then to now is history. But what we need to identify with as we move forward as citizens of the kingdom is what's next. We can't stay in the then or the now. We got to be looking beyond into the next. Because the, the next has to be something greater than what I'm dealing with or feeling right now. So if I anticipate the next, I'm going to reach for what is it because I'm going to believe God for that place. And that's all I will pursue. I don't want what I'm going through now. I don't want what I went through last season. I don't want the feelings of oppression and depression. I want the next. But the only way we can get there is by knowing the king that's in you. And when you know the king that is within you, he's giving you the same thing that he gave Adam and Eve, the charge to multiply, be fruitful, have dominion, subdue, and replenish. Everything you need is where? In close, know your birthright. The king is within us, and I'm not going to have time for tonight, but it begins to talk about how the flesh, there's nothing good in it. 
But God wants us to not be so concerned with our flesh. Just know and accept there's nothing good in it. Don't prop it up. Don't cover it up. Just kill it. Once we make a decision to tell flesh, you die. We got to tell it because it's got unruly members that unless we bring it under subjection, it'll drive us somewhere we don't want to go. So we have to make the decision to allow the king of glory, Jehovah Gabar, to fight your battle. Jehovah Jireh to be your provider. Amen. Amen. If you call on any of them in any circumstances that you need, he's going to show up. But because he's such a gentleman, he gonna, he's not coming just because if you just don't call him, he's going to just, he going to, okay, he's going to let you see how far we can go. He's going to let you keep going around the same bush, looking for the same thing, and it's right there in front of you. It's in you. He is the way maker. He is the way maker. He is the lily of the valley. He is the bright and the morning star. He is the king of glory. He is. So as we close tonight, let us be prepared to go into a little bit deeper. I'm going to go a little bit deeper into what does this look like as being kingdom agents called out to rule and to reign on earth as it is in heaven to be the ones to call forth the be done's, the manifestation of praise and worship being the vehicle. Hmm. You know, hallelujah. He's saying as we, as we lift, stand, as we can stand tonight, I'm not going to read any, pre preach any more on this. We can just stand in the room. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We know the story of John the Baptist that was the one that was crying out in the wilderness. And he was preparing the way of the Lord. Many heard him and many just rejected or didn't want to receive it. But I'm here to tell you tonight, Bishop, do I have like 15 minutes? It's, or five? Would you take these shoes off, please? Take my shoes off, sorry. The, the Lord is really impressing upon my heart. This season now, can you get it? I can. See, this is the stuff I go through. He's going to cause everything that has been crooked in your life to become straight. He's going to call every voice that has lifted itself against you to be silenced. He is here tonight to raise up a body that will go out and exhibit the presence of God through his presence in you. He wants us to shake off the things that have kept us worshiping and praising the wrong thing. And he wants us to elevate ourselves and begin to press and produce some new fresh oil, the shaman oil that will begin to be an aroma that will cause heaven's gates to open up. He wants heaven to open up in this place. Ruke shetoa. Heaven open up. Ruke tetona de ekeo. Open up, rukose. Heaven open. Rusa te deo. Eketinehoso. Open up. Ruabakeya. 
As it opens up, let your glory be the illumining light that shines in the mist. We give you all the glory, Lord. We give you all the praise.